Well, welcome to Alpha Wolf Trading. Did you know that there's over 12,000 stocks or companies that trade on the OTC? Between the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, you have over 7,000 companies. But us as retail investors, we wouldn't know that unless we were researching. Because why? Wall Street focuses on the elite, the big companies. And where the retail investor has their advantage is in small and micro cap stocks. Why? Because you have the opportunity to speak directly with leadership. That is what this is all about here at Alpha Wolf Trading. We're trying to find the hidden gems and we interview the executive teams of companies that we think meet the parameters to be those hidden gems. I also want to make sure you understand that this is not a paid for promotion. I collect no compensation for the interviews I do here. These companies that I interview have been identified as potential opportunities for me and the members of Alpha Wolf Trading to receive a higher than average return on our investment. These companies I have identified either because of a technical setup on a chart, a fundamental change within the organization, new management team, new products, all kinds of different things that actually lead me here. But what do I think is the most important? Leadership. And that is why I do these interviews. I want to understand what drives the person that is leading the charge. I want to feel their passion. I want to understand their vision and the strategy that they're going to use to achieve success. That is what these interviews are for. I want to understand the share structure and the cap table, the size of the TAM, the total addressable market. This is the opportunity to learn all of those things. So sit back and enjoy. And if you learn anything from today's interview, do us a favor. Subscribe to the Alpha Wolf Trading YouTube channel. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor. I recommend highly that before buying any security, you speak to a financial advisor and do your own due diligence. Let's go to Clear. Yeah, so Clear, we're negotiating with some big partners. They're not done. We want them to be done ASAP. We use language that said we're going to negotiate partnerships. What we're really doing is preparing to launch product nationally with big partners. And I say that because it's not so much as the business deal that's the issue. It's the preparation required to be able to supply a national distribution play. It's, it's a heavy demand. So in this last uh, annual report just published two weeks ago, everybody should go look at it. You know, I know they're hard to read. Okay. It's all there though. Read every word. It's all there. It talks about risk factors and all the things that are important for us to overcome our strategy. All of them. I mean, you know, like 20 pages of them. But in that, we also disclose that we're making substantial investments in the infrastructure necessary to produce product. Not that we're producing that our, our contracted third-party manufacturers will produce. And so what happens is we come in and they say, hey, we're professionals of this. Yes, I've got a distribution customer, a channel that we want to make big with, right? Great. So you say to the manufacturer, I need you to make this product. Here's the spec. And they say, I'm going to have to invest in some equipment. I'll invest here if you'll invest here. And they make a little deal. That's how it works. That's real world. If anybody tells you different, it's not different. <laughs> and so we said, okay, we'll do that. And so that's about 800000 for Clearer just to be in the game to produce at the scale we're talking about. And so I've said often, and I do believe it to be true, once it launches, it's going to be poof times 10. Really? <laughs> big number. That's a big not number. Instantly, not instantly. Take a little time to get there. But but the scale, uh, and, you know, and the clear products, remember, they're the um, full circle confirmation of the thesis that started the company over 15 years ago. And that was the inventor, Ken, set out to keep his dad safe from infection in a nursing home. And so we have a whole product line in that space. It's a, it's a, whole, it's a whole product development scheme. And so we, at first we said we're going to go out and you know, build a sales force and start working reps and all this stuff to find traction. But we got the attention of the big boys so fast. And we looked at each other in, the, in management and we said, here we go again, right? 
<laughs> negotiating with giants. But but we really recognize that the product deserves the kind of massive scale that these big boys can do because it just needs to go everywhere for its purpose. It's a, it's going to keep people, it's going to heal wounds. It's going to keep people safe, help heal wounds. Um, and, you know, we've invested almost uh, over 10 years and I think about $15 million. I mean, it's a lot of money. And so these products cleared the FDA just prior to COVID. And so, and we've got some early attraction, but not big sales but validation. We have validation of the efficacy and the safety of these products in such a significant way. So we see them as a, as a disruptive agent, transformative for good in the way infection control is managed in the surgical suite, post-surgical infection, wound care, burn care, dental, eye care, dermatology, on and on it goes. That's our thesis, right? Platform technology. Anyway, so we, we believe that we're going to get some of these national partnerships done. They're not done yet. Uh, don't worry, we'll announce when they're done, okay? And when they go, because they haven't gone, when they go big, when they go is really big. I mean, what really makes it? What makes Clear so? What what's so amazing about Clear? It's that same thesis, you know. Uh, in the antimicrobial field, uh, there's this there's this concept of called co collateral damage. Okay, collateral damage. If you so think about it, I'm going to give you a little analogy. Uh, you, something's going to come attack you. You want to take a little weapon? Or you want to take a big weapon? <laughs> How do you want to go into battle? I'm, I want I want the big weapon. Okay, so big weapons have collateral damage, right? So the idea is in the surgical suite and in healing the body, you want big weapons, but you don't want collateral damage. So if you can come to the marketplace with something that's broad spectrum and potent and effective, but gentle, so that it doesn't damage tissue and it doesn't create a cr a chronic toxicity, long-term toxicity, and you can do that in a way that the others can't, then you are number one in the world. Well, that's what we got. It's, it's that good. It's that good. And again, why would we why would we spend a decade and all this money if we didn't believe that we had the goods? Now, a lot of people fail. That industry is fraught with failure. And the only reason I say that is we, we've been tested at such an extensive level to know, you know, as we always say, we know what we know what we know. And by God, we know it. And you know what? We do have it. And I look at this market and I say, this is a product that will change the world for good. It's the entire reason the company was founded. It was, it was the foundation that allowed us to essentially invest a career. I mean, that's what we've done. So, yeah, it's going to go, and it's going to go big. And, I, and so I, hope it's really soon. I hope it's really soon, okay? <laughs> so do I. Because <laughs> what's frustrating to me, Dennis, when I hear about things like this, products like this, that can make – my brother just had surgery. He broke his hip. Literally, what is their biggest concern? Infection, right? Right now – that's the biggest concern. It's so frustrating for me to hear that you've had this product now for I don't know how many years, right? And it's such a logical thing to say, if this is, does what it's what they claim it does, why isn't this thing in every freaking hospital, you know, everywhere across the globally? Why is this not everywhere, right? Well, I can write that book. I mean, uh, I... I can write that book. That's a that's a that's a that's a advanced business class. I'm telling you, here's the reason, right? The systems, uh, the regulatory system, the competitive system, the distribution system is is so difficult to navigate. In medicine, in particular, okay, it is extraordinary high bar to entry. The barriers to entry are off the chart. It's a, it's a game for well funded companies with with good money to go spend your way through the journey, and it takes a lot of capital. And then finding adoption is fraught with people that are skeptics. And so even when we were going through the FDA, they're, they're basically professional skeptics. You have to prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it. And they don't say no, they just make you do more tests. It took us, it took us almost 6.8 million to get through the FDA. Okay. Now we did. And when we did, and we came through great, but we had to, now here's the, you know, for, I'll tell you this insightful story. When we were doing that, it was so frustrating and, and difficult the, the beauty of the system, to give them credit, 
is that by forcing us to do the kind of extensive work that we did to prove our claims, it now gives us a competitive edge in the marketplace, having done the work to be able to boldly stand in front of the medical community with supported data sufficient to, to induce them to make change. Okay, so, you know, the FDA is a bunch of smart people. They're hard, but they're smart. And they've seen a lot of stuff come and go. And we're and we made it through and we're going to last because it's that good. So that's why it's so hard. So you say that, but listen, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's not so safe. And sometimes they think it's safe and it's not safe. So, so making sure that's what happens. Make sure. Then you got to go compete. You get through the FDA and you haven't made a nickel. Okay. Then you got to figure out how to go sell it. So, so again, I think the thesis of our business in, in its entirety, especially clearer, is having done that extraordinary work, we can now empower a business partner to leverage their existing infrastructure for market share and for profit in a way that little companies can't possibly touch. And if you set out with that mindset, that's what I'm going to do as a business. That's what we do. If we're going to do that, people love our company. These big guys, they, they should be they should be investing and backing all our R&D. <laughs> we're working on that. You're not doing it. That's a that's a call for innovation. No, anyway. So all right. Clear up, we got it. Um I remember you telling me something about the fact during a surgery, they they can they can spray the they can spray the wound, right? No, it's an irrigate. So what they do is wound irrigation is what they call it. So yeah, so when the surgeon cuts the body like he's gonna do a total knee or some kind of surgery, he'll say irrigate and they rinse out, they debreed, they move tissue and they wash it out, right? To the um the fluids. And so our, our product is meant for that. You can irrigate, but our product is a leave-in product. You don't rinse it out because it's been proven in a closed environment to operate, provide antimicrobial support for up to three days without tissue or systemic toxicity, meaning it's naturally safe for the body and yet continues to provide this little support for infection control over time. Well, that's an extraordinary claim. It also has been proven to affect, uh, be effective against biofilm. So when when bugs attack uh, living tissue, uh, the bugs form and they're under attack from the environment. They they form a, a a mucosal membrane that creates protection. We pierce that. Our product pierces that, so the bugs can't build up an, a protective immuno response, and then it oxidizes. It's an oxidant, and so it basically laces the cell and, and uh, kills the bug, destroys it. Dis dismantles is the better word. It dismantles those contaminants. And it does so in such a gentle way that it doesn't damage tissue. There again, that's that claim again. Right. Big, big claim. Most So collateral damage, we talked about that. Most of the products that, you know, people say, hey, look at this product. It's 99.999 and it operates in 10 seconds. And then you read the label, it says, do not drink, do not touch. <laughs> <laughs> Wash if you get any skin contact, right? I, I yeah I, I say it jokingly really but you know I somebody would say well this is a really great way to you know kill stuff and I said yeah so is gasoline just light it up let it roll <laughs> it's, right extreme version but the, but the point is the, the trade off of if efficacy and collateral damage is the trick in the art and if you can do it without collateral damage why would you use something that causes collateral damage I mean it's really that simple can you get the job done and not cause tissue damage. Okay, what else we got to talk about? <laughs> That's where it goes. Anyway, it's a, it's a winner. Clear as right. Yeah, it's not but, there yet. I understand. That's that, that's that forward-looking part, right? And there's all kinds of risk factors. Again, I, I'm obligated to make sure people know that. But, but I can tell you, management believes, and we've known for over a decade, that it will find its home. And when it finds its home, it's going to go big. And we've been working on the last couple of years intensely to get that thing out in a big way to the market. So. Okay. More, now, more to come. <laughs>